All right, we're starting unit eight with ecology. We're gonna get a nice overview of some of the general things. Um, so let's start out, let's define what ecology is. We're looking at the interactions between organisms and their environment. Okay, because obviously this is going to determine how many of them there are, where they live, or there's lots of them, of them, are they clumped, are they spread out, all those good things. Okay, so throughout this unit, we're gonna be at kind of different levels of being zoomed in or zoomed out, okay? And starting up here is kind of the widest view going on down here to the smallest view, right? So this right here, an organism, is just one individual of one species. And then here a population are several individuals, but all of the same species. Then you've got a community, which are multiple populations in the same area and they're interacting. Okay, then you've got an ecosystem. So that takes a whole community, but here it adds in more of the environment, things like nutrients, energy, that kind of thing. And then if we take one way bigger step out, now we've got the biosphere. So this is like the whole earth and how those interactions can happen. When we look at the interactions, we can divide them into biotic and abiotic factors. We're going to spend a lot of the units talking about biotic factors and specific biotic factors, okay? So I'm just gonna kind of glaze over them here because again, we're gonna get way more detailed in, in future lectures, but biotic meaning like life-based and abiotic meaning not life-based. So biotic factors meaning factors that are like happening because of other living things. This would be things like prey, predators, parasites, disease, competition. These are all things that are going to affect an organism, right? Um, abiotic factors, these are things that are not life-based, but that are still going to have a big impact. Sunlight, temperature, water, soil, okay? So we're gonna dive into all those more specifically. Um, one thing that you're gonna hear a lot of in this unit is thinking about that things are interconnected and it's not just this one thing over here. And so we're gonna be looking a lot at how one thing affects another thing affects another thing and how they're all tied together. Circle of life, baby. Okay, so first we are going to, again, talk about the abiotic factors because the biotic factors are going to be a bigger focus later. So let's look at those ones that I listed earlier. One is climate. Now, one thing I wanna be really specific about is climate is not weather. Okay, weather is what's happening day to day. Climate is general, overall, long term prevailing weather. So, like, you know, Wisconsin is typically thought of as a colder state, but does that mean that we can't get like 100 degrees in the summer? Of course it doesn't, right? Um, or, for example, like Wisconsin and Mexico have different climates, but that doesn't mean that, again, we can have a 100 degree day, there can be a 100 degree day in Mexico, but that doesn't mean we have the same climate. That's that one day's weather. OK, so climate takes into account everything, not only temperature, but rainfall or snowfall, sunlight, wind, all of that stuff. OK, and even looking at climate, you can look at the whole globe's climate or maybe just more regional climate like Midwestern climate. Right. Uh, microclimate is much more specialized. Now, we don't think about that much here. But even things like, as we've talked about before, like if you're close to a really big lake, you might have a different climate than somebody else. So if you're living right next to Lake Michigan, you're gonna maybe see some slightly different precipitation, some slightly different temperatures than if you're living inland. Um, where I was used to live in California, there were different pockets where like you would be in the middle of thick fog and you would drive five minutes, you'd be out of it. And you drive another five minutes, you'd be back into it again. There'd be these little pockets, these microclimates of fog. Kind of weird. Um, so overall global climate patterns are mostly determined, not surprisingly, by the sun, right? Um, the sun is what causes the main temperature variations. Um, and so this is what causes different latitudinal variations. So when you think about it, it's hottest near the equator. That is because at the equator, the sun is more or less overhead for most of the time of the year. Okay, as you move either towards the North Pole or towards the South Pole, the sun is overhead during less of the day and during less time of the year. And so that is going to mean you are going to have much bigger temperature fluctuations. Okay, and you're also going to see a bigger fluctuation in your daytime and nighttime hours, whether it's summer or winter, right? We know we get like the sun sets super early in winter and then it'll be late really really it'll be light really really late in the summer right this is because of the sun coming at us at different angles um one of the things this is a common misconception is that our seasons 
are caused by the Earth's tilt. Okay, people don't usually think this, okay? Because the Earth spins, does one complete spin in 24 hours. So every day the Earth is spinning. So our temperatures do not have to do with the spin. That's daytime versus nighttime. But what's happening here is the Earth is at a tilt. And so it's sometimes during the year, the top part of the Earth is facing the sun. But at other times during the year, uh -huh, the bottom part of the Earth, the southern hemisphere is facing towards the sun. So if the top part of the Earth is facing the sun, then that is the summer in the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere is having winter. Vice versa, when the bottom part of the Earth is facing the sun mm, in December, the southern hemisphere is having their summer and we're having our winter. Okay, so that's why the seasons are flip flopped because different parts of the Earth are more or less angled towards the sun at those times. Um, there are some major huge um, wind patterns that happen, like maybe you've heard of like the jet stream and stuff like that. And basically the idea is there's this like huge cycling of warm air and cold air. And this is how like, you know, Columbus was able to discover the new land is that he, you know, rode some of these trade winds this way. So there are some winds that go this way. There's some winds that go that way. Some winds that go this way. The idea is to know that they're present and that basically what happens is that um, you've got hot air that's dry and then as it cools it falls because it's more dense and then it picks up moisture and then as it goes back up it's going to release the moisture as rain and dry out and get hotter and so on and so on and so on over and over and over again um water also does this okay um water is coming in different patterns from the different parts of the world. So, you know, Florida is a great place to vacation because it's water is coming down here from the Caribbean. So the ocean is pretty nice to swim in. Whereas where I came from in California, look at this, their water is kind of coming from Alaska. So people wear wetsuits in the ocean, um, like year round, basically out here, it's cold. The water is cold. Even in the middle of summer, it's cold. Um, cause look at this cold water coming in from, coming in from, um, Alaska. A mountains affect climate too. Um, so typically what happens with a mountain is you've got air coming, okay? And then as the air comes up because of the elevation, the air is forced up because of the mountain. And as air goes up, the higher up it gets, it's going to drop in temperature, okay? And when air drops in temperature, it's going to then also release its moisture. So it's going to rain, okay? And so then it's going to rain a lot on this side of the mountain. And then as it's dropped its moisture, now it's gonna come back down this side of the mountain and it's not gonna have any moisture anymore. It's gonna be dry. So oftentimes on this side of mountains, we get deserts and this side is like a lush green forest because of that difference as the, the rain is called like a rain shadow because um, there's no rain over here, but rain over here. Um, so as you can imagine, climate is going to be huge and it's going to pay, play a major role in what organisms live there and what plants live there and the, um, what habitats are present. And so, um, uh, vocab word you should know is a biome. Okay. So a biome is basically like a type of habitat is called a major life zone. And the way that you can characterize a biome is by the vegetation type. If you're talking about terrestrial biomes or more by physical environment, what you're talking about in the aquatic biomes. Um, and so here is a map of some of the terrestrial biomes on earth. Okay. We are going to learn a whole lot more about them in a separate thing. So don't super stress about it right now, but know that more, more focus on biomes is coming. One thing I do want you to know about for terrestrial biomes, this is called a climograph, okay? And if you were to have the data, uh, temperature and precipitation data of a region, you could figure out what biome it was, right? So if you have, you know, some area that it, it's like 25 degrees Celsius and has 300, um, 300 centimeters of rainfall, oh, that would be a tropic rainforest, right? Or so you have something that's negative 10 degrees and 10 centimeters of rainfall, oh, that's going to be a tundra over here. So you can use your X and Y axis and go over and up and figure out which one of the terrestrial biomes this is based off of temperature and rainfall, which is kind of cool. Okay, so again, stay tuned for more on biomes. And here's our summary of what we learned in this lecture and the high points. And here is where you can find it in the textbook.